Lessons. Welcome to Rocksmith. To make sure you... So, you're already pretty... F well then, welcome aboard. Now, how experienced would you say you are at playing guitar or bass? Think mostly about the one you want to play first, today. Alright, now let's choose what kind of parts you... Do you plan on playing... Give this one a shot. Awesome. Let's move on. We're gonna bring up a calibration meter here in a second. When you see it, play your strings hard and fast to make some noise. Do that until we tell you to stop, then cover the strings to mute them. Okay, here goes. Get ready. Okay, now tuning. Let's start with a low E string. That's the one that's thickest and closest to you. It's highlighted red in the game. The tuner tells you if the note's too low or too high. Then you turn the matching tuning peg to adjust it until the needle is right in the middle. If the needle moves the wrong way, turn the other direction. Now, go ahead and get your low E string in tune. Now let's tune the other strings. The next one down is the A string. It's highlighted in yellow. The next one after that is the D string. It's blue. Now the G string in orange. If you're having trouble with anything, or just want to go more in depth, the next to last string is the B string. It's green. And finally, the high E string in purple. All right, sounds great. Now, let's play each string one more time, just to double check that you're good to go. Okay, let's get this show on the road and play some actual notes. So this is a note. It's yellow, which means the A string. Remember, the A string is the second thickest one. Now, it's coming down the second lane, so you're gonna play the second fret. That means you put your finger right here, two spaces up. Let's start from the headstock and count the spaces between the metal strips. One, two, and that's where your finger goes. 
When the note gets all the way down to the front of the screen, pick the string to play it. Now, you give it a shot. Press your finger down on the second fret of the A string. When the note reaches the bottom of the screen, play the A string. For now, the note will wait there for you until you play it. Sounds like you're in the wrong place. Move up a fret. Sounds like you're in the wrong place. Move down a Great job! You can also just play the string without pressing anything down. That's called an open note. Check out the horizontal line coming down the screen. That means you play the open string. It's yellow again, so this is an open A. Let's go ahead and play that open A. Like before, we'll wait for you to find the right note. Nice. Now, let's try playing a few notes in a row. A run of notes like this is called a riff. Don't worry if you miss a note. We'll wait for you to find the right one. Sweet. Sounds like you're getting the hang of it. Now you're ready to take on Rocksmith. There's more where that came from. Lessons are... Let's take a minute to get your strap attached and adjusted just right. Most guitars have two metal buttons for connecting your strap. There's usually one at the bottom and one here at the opposite corner. Not all guitars have the strap buttons in these exact locations, so you might have to adjust accordingly. Now, let's attach the strap to the bottom button. If your strap has this thing you slide to adjust the length, you might want to attach the end closest to that thing to the bottom so it doesn't dig into your shoulder. Then you just attach the other end to the other button. Make sure the strap doesn't fold back over the button or get twisted up. You want the strap to lay flat. The slits in the strap might be a little tight, so it might be tough to squeeze the buttons through at first, especially if the strap's new. Now, just take a minute to adjust the strap. Once it's in a good place, you're ready to rock. To play standing, you'll want a guitar strap attached. The strap goes over your shoulder and around your back, and the guitar just rests against your stomach. It might be tempting to try playing with your guitar hanging extremely low or high, but that can get uncomfortable fast. You want the guitar somewhere between chest and stomach level, with the neck tilted slightly upwards. You might need to adjust the strap to get a good angle. Let the strap do the work. You don't want to be holding the guitar up while you're trying to play. Now, let your forearm rest lightly against the edge of the guitar, and you're ready to play. Of course, everybody's different, so that exact position and angle of the guitar will vary from person to person. If playing feels awkward or hurts, you might want to stop and adjust. There's a couple different ways to hold your guitar while you're sitting down. We'll show you how it works for a right-handed player, so if you're playing lefty, you'll need to reverse it. Let the indent on the lower side of the guitar rest on your right leg. It can lean back against your body. You want to balance the guitar without having to support it with your arms, because they're going to be busy playing. Then you just let your forearm rest against the edge of the guitar. You can try resting the indent over your left leg with the back end of the guitar resting against your right leg. You'll need to raise your left leg up with a big book or a small stool. The same principles apply here. 
Keep the guitar balanced so you don't have to muscle it around with your arms. And again, you just let your forearm rest against the edge of your guitar, ready to play. Let's start with the most basic part of picking technique, how to hold your pick. Curl the fingers of your picking hand into a loose fist and rest the pick right on the last knuckle of your index finger. Then just let your thumb rest on top of the pick. You don't have to squeeze too hard. You want the pick to be able to pivot a bit between the fingers as it picks the strings. There are two huge things to keep in mind when it comes to picking notes on the guitar. Number one is no tension. If you play with tension, you'll get tired faster. You'll make more mistakes, and if you do it long enough, you can do real damage to yourself. So keep it relaxed. If you feel yourself tensing up, take a break, shake it out, and start over. Number two is what we call economy of motion. That just means you don't do any more than you have to. Even the thickest guitar strings are only a fraction of an inch thick, so you just need a very tiny motion to get your pick from one side of the string to the other. No need to overdo it. Let's start with a basic downstroke. That just means you pick down through the string. Start with the pick above the string you want to pick. It can rest on the string until you're actually ready to play it. Now, push the pick right through it. The pick can then rest on the next string down. Now, when you learn upstrokes too, you'll be able to play twice as many notes with the same motion. An upstroke is exactly what it sounds like. You play the string by pulling the pick up through it. All the motion happens in the wrist. It's just a tiny rotation, not a huge movement. And remember, when you're playing electric guitar, you don't have to pick it hard to make it loud. That's the amp's job. Now, when it comes to picking, one of the best things you can learn starting out is alternate picking. That just means you're gonna pick down, up, down, up, down, up all the time. The key is that you'll always go down on downbeats and up on upbeats. Even if you leave a note out, your hand still keeps going down and up just as if you had played a note there anyway. You'd also keep this going if you did a hammer-on or pull-off or something like that. You don't pick the string on the hammer-on, but your picking hand still goes up on that note, just as if you had played it, so when it's time to play a downstroke, you're ready to go. This is how you get to where you can play those fast passages with lots of notes. It's not the only approach to picking out there, but it's definitely the best place to start and a good habit to pick up early on. When we talk about shifting, we just mean moving your hand up and down the neck to different positions. But before we get to that, let's take a quick sec and get to know your guitar a little better. Most guitars use dots or some other kind of inlay to mark certain frets. They're usually marked on both the fretboard and the upper side of the neck. The first dot is usually on the third fret. Go ahead and find that on your guitar. Let's just play the third fret on the low E string, the thickest string highlighted in red. Let's try that. Excellent! There will probably also be dots or inlays on the 5th, 7th, and ninth frets. Let's find those. Amazing! Perfect! That was almost too perfect. 
The next one up is the 12th fret, usually marked with a double dot. The 12th fret is special because notes 12 frets apart are what we call an octave higher. That means it's the same note, just at a higher pitch. Same thing with the 3rd and 15th frets. 12 frets apart, so it's another octave. Notice the dot pattern above the 12th fret just repeats the pattern from the lower frets. The dots above the 12th fret are the 15th, 17th, 19th, and 21st. Don't worry, as you play more, these fret numbers will become second nature, and you'll be able to quickly tell which upper dots are an octave higher than the lower ones. Let's try that. You got that one down. Right on, nice. Perfect. Now here's a riff that will take some shifting to play. Listen to this riff one more time before you play it. Okay, try playing it now. Amazing. Here's another one with a little more shifting to it. Here's that riff again, but let's just listen to it. You can play after that. Play it now. Awesome. Okay, now let's put it all together in a song. Here goes. Great performance.
flawless performance. Okay, let's talk about sustains. You play a sustain just like any other note, but instead of cutting it off, let it ring out. Let's try that. That was almost too perfect. Here's a riff with that sustain in it. Here's that riff again, but let's just listen to it. You can play after that. Okay, try playing it now. Perfect. Okay, now let's put it all together in a song. Here goes. Flawless performance. <laughs> All right, time for some slides. Slides are pretty straightforward. Just play a note like usual, then keep your finger pressed down and slide up to the next note. Now you try it. Your slide nailed it. Now let's try sliding down the neck. We'll use a different finger this time. This is pretty much the same thing we just did, but in reverse. Try it now. Awesome. All right, let's use that slide to play a riff. Here's that riff again, but let's just listen to it. You can play after that. Play it now. Awesome.
Now, let's play another riff that has two slides, one going up and one going down. Here's the riff again. Listen to it, then play it. Play it now. Sweet. You're ready to apply this to a practice track now. Here goes. Getting better. Okay, one of the most typical guitar sounding things you can do is bending the strings. Bending the string makes the notes pitch higher. The more you bend, the higher it goes. For now, let's just do a little one, what's called a half step. Try it at your own pace. I think you're on the wrong string there. You're still a bit shy of hitting that final note, so bend the string a little bit more this time. It's easier if you... Outstanding. Here's a riff using that half-step bend. Listen to this riff one more time before you play it. Okay, try playing it now. Let's try that again. Outstanding. Let's try a bend that's a little bigger, a whole step bend, starting from the 12th fret this time. Let's just try that. Amazing. Now check out this riff with a whole step bend, starting on the 14th fret.
Here's that riff again, but let's just listen to it. You can play after that. Okay, try playing it now. Let's try that again. Here's that riff again. Let's try it again, a little slower. Now your turn. Let's try that again. Here's that riff again. Let's slow that down, then build up your speed. Let's try that again. Here's that riff again. Now a little faster. Nice, you're back to full speed now. Let's try that again. Here's that riff again. Let's slow that down and then build up your speed. Let's slow that down, then build up your speed. Perfect. As a general rule, you want to bend the string in the direction that gives you the most room. That means that the high E, B, and G strings will get pushed up, but the low E, A, and D strings will actually get pulled down. 
Here's what that looks like. Give it a shot. Excellent. Cool. Let's put that band into a riff now. Here's that riff again, but let's just listen to it. You can play after that. Play it now. You're ready for the practice track now. Here goes. You can really spice up your playing with hammer-ons and pull-offs. Let's take hammer-ons for starters. After you play one note, you can play another one by just pressing your finger down without picking again. Now your turn. That was some top shelf music making right there. Let's put that hammer on into a riff. Here's the riff again. Listen to it, then play it. Play it now. That was some top shelf music making right there. All right, now for the Hammer-On's evil twin, the pull-off. It's really not bad at all. You just play a note, then release it with a tiny pluck to play the lower note without re-picking. Play it now. Awesome. Let's try playing a riff using that pull-off. Listen to this riff one more time before you play it. Play it now.
try that again. Here's that riff again. Outstanding. The fun really starts when you start connecting hammer-ons and pull-offs in a row. All you're going to do here is put the hammer-on and pull-off together. That's three notes for the price of one. Okay, you play now. Let's try that again. That was some top shelf music making right there. Here's the kind of riff you can get using hammer-ons and pull-offs together. Listen to this riff one more time before you play it. Now your turn. Let's try that again. Here's that riff again. Let's try it again, a little slower. Let's try that a little slower and then build up your speed. Let's try it again, a little slower. Let's give that another shot. Good, now a little faster. Let's try, try that again. Play it now. Right on, nice. You're ready to apply this to a practice track now. Here goes.
If you're gonna play the guitar, you've gotta know some chords. That just means you strum notes on several strings at a time. Chords are usually used as part of the accompaniment to a song. You strum along on the chord to support the singer or the solo. Let's try strumming all six strings at once to start. Let's just try that. Nicely done. Let's bring in your fretting hand and try to make a more useful chord. Take your second finger, your middle finger, and put it on the second fret of the A string. You'll need to arch your finger some so that you're only pressing the string down with the very tip of your finger. If you use the side, you might end up muting some of the other strings. Now let's pick each string and make sure each one is sounding out clearly. Keep your finger down the whole time. Good. Now strum the whole chord. Try it at your own pace. Awesome. Now keep that one finger chord going and let's add a second finger in there. You've already got your middle finger on the second fret of the A string. Now put your third finger, your ring finger, on the second fret of the D string. Since you're on the same fret on two strings right next to each other, it might feel like a tight squeeze at first. But don't worry, there's plenty of room. Your second finger will go right in the middle of the fret, but your third finger will need to get wedged in there between your second finger and the fret wire. Trick is to make sure it isn't touching any other strings. Now you try it. Put your second finger on the second fret of the A string and your third finger nailed it. Cool. Let's see if we can get just one more finger in there. So, you've already got your second and third fingers down on the A and D strings. Now if you put your first finger down on the first fret of the G string, E minor becomes E major. This chord comes up all the time in all genres of music, so it's a great one to get under your fingers. And again, the thing here is to make sure that your fingers only touch the strings they're supposed to touch. Touch any others, and you'll just end up muting them. Let's play through all the strings again to make sure you're getting all the notes you paid for. Good. Now strum it. Now you try it. Awesome. Now that your fretting hand has some stuff it can do, let's go back to the strumming hand. Usually you're going to hold down the chord, then strum some pattern until you get ready to change the chord. So it's really your strumming hand that's in charge of rhythm. You can strum a chord down, or you can strum a chord up. Usually you'll use a mix of both together. Let's just try going down, up, down, up, down a bunch of times. Okay, try playing it now. Right on, nice. You're ready to apply this to a practice track now. Here goes.
Tremolo just means to play a note over and over again really fast. There isn't a whole lot to it. You just keep on picking. The real trick is not to tense up. Also, it might help to tilt the pick a little bit so it's hitting the string at more of an angle. Try it at your own pace. Great job. All right, now we'll drop that tremolo into a full guitar riff. Here's that riff again, but let's just listen to it. You can play after that. Okay, you play now. Nicely done. You're ready to apply this to a practice track now. Here goes. Now, let's get going on palm mutes. Touch the strings close to the bridge with the edge of your hand to mute them a little bit. Now you try it. Huh. Doesn't sound like you're muting the string at all. That was almost too perfect. Usually you'll get several palm mutes in a row, so let's try repeating it a few times. Now your turn. Outstanding. Now here's a riff built out of palm mutes. Here's that riff again, but let's just listen to it. You can play after that. Now your turn. Let's try that again.
Nicely done. Let's check out another palm mute riff. Here's the riff again. Listen to it, then play it. Now your turn. Let's try that again. Here's that riff again. Okay, you play now. Let's try that again. <laughs> that was awesome. Here's a riff that shifts back and forth between palm mutes and regular notes. Just lift up your hand when the regular notes come along. Here's the riff again. Listen to it, then play it. Okay, you play now. Let's try that again. Perfect. You're ready for the practice track now. Here goes. Another really beautiful sound you can make with your guitar is a harmonic. You get this sort of bell-like tone by lightly touching the string right over the fret wire. Don't press down. Your finger just kind of hovers, barely making contact. Then, after you pick the note, let it ring out.
Now you try it. That was good. Harmonics only work at certain points on the fretboard. The most common are the 12th, 7th, and 5th frets. Here's one at the 7th. <laughs> nice one! All right, let's see how you might use these harmonics in a riff. Listen to this riff one more time before you play it. Play it now. Let's try that again. Here's that riff again. You got that one down. You're ready to apply this to a practice track now. Here goes. Tone Designer. Welcome to Tone Designer. 